Today I want to talk about talking about code. Now we're going to talk about two different subjects here, sort of loosely connected. Uh, one of them is going to be really boring. Everyone's going to hate me for it. And the other one's going to be a little bit more interesting, but still kind of boring. So if you're here for like pure raw entertainment and energy and uh, super cool tidbits that will make you a 10x developer, I don't think this is the place for you. But if you're looking to uh, talk about what you're working on with other people, uh, either friends, uh, worker, colleagues, or I don't know, interview people, uh, then this might be the video for you. We're gonna start by looking at modeling code because I feel like this is a pretty boring thing that we can, oops, we can very quickly get through and then we can move on to the slightly more interesting but still boring topic. So if you're talking about modeling code and you're just briefly hopping into a call, I think diagrams.net is probably what everyone uses. It is not a uh, super advanced piece of, of technology. You just create a new diagram, you name it whatever you want to. You have a couple options like a sequence diagram, a swim lane diagram, etc. I'm just going to create a blank one. Now, as you go, you might draw a couple of these. You might add labels and draw like arrows to connect them. And then we can come over here to a slightly uh, more complete example. So in the case of the battery checker, right? First thing we do is we check, are we on Linux or on, are we on Windows? This might be handled by some other library in the, in the tool. Maybe it's not, maybe we have to invent it. Uh, after we check if we're on, on Windows or Linux, if we're on Windows, we might do a WMIC call. If we're on Linux, we might go check like a battery percentage file or whatever. And then if we're on Windows, we might have to check if the battery exists, but we don't have to do that on Linux. Then we check what the threshold is. So maybe if we're above 20%, we're, we're good. If not, the laptop gets sent to the moon. Then we like maybe redirect to a login page. The user might click on like a log out button. And you can see here, there's a couple different concepts that are captured. Uh, we're sort of abstracting out the entire uh, operating system to just one check. We're just uh, being assaulted by a cat. That boy's got some attitude today. Uh, so we're like abstracting out the operating system. We're sort of abstracting out how we check the battery. This is all stuff we could do in like pseudocode. Uh, and then we're abstracting out even some like logic here, some business logic, just to say, uh, you know, who, who really cares? And the reason why we might be going through this whole control flow here and checking how we get from like start to finish is maybe we're trying to figure out like, do we need the user to click a logout button if the, the battery's too low or do we need the user to automatically be logged out? We might be asking like, is there anything else that can happen here? So maybe the Linux page might not uh, include the battery sometimes, depending on the Linux OS that you're on or something, because maybe you're supporting multiple Linux operating systems. So you're just generally like talking maybe to your boss or whatever, and you're trying to sort of model out how you think this ticket should work that your boss gave you, or your boss is modeling it out for you. And you're just going back and forth and trying to loosely figure out how this should work. That way you're not doing work that later then someone says you didn't need to do. Similarly, if you're ever in like an interview and they're telling you, hey, can you go like model out an API or something? Uh, maybe you want to try something similar if they allow you to, sometimes they do. Uh, and what what the, what's nice about this is you can sort of hand wave away a lot of stuff like uh, look up who or Whole Foods looking up a product. Maybe this is like a grocery store API or something. Uh, and you have like a root level for your REST API. You have like the user level and then you have like the products over here. So we'll say this is like a food API. I don't know. In a lot of cases, if you're writing pseudocode, you might trap yourself into thinking about stuff at a bit lower level than you necessarily need to. But if they allow you to like talk about it in a, a diagramming fashion, what I like about it is not only does it like allow you to abstract things and sort of hand wave them away, it almost encourages it where you're just trying to like loosely capture it just to get a rough idea. It allows you to very quickly make assumptions that then get disproven in a very quick way to address it uh, before you end up writing out a bunch of pseudocode that ends up being incorrect. Now that said, uh, I do think that when you start getting into complete UML diagrams, you end up, uh, let me see if I can find it. This is uh, a basic UML diagram here, there we go. Uh, I do think that once you start pulling up entire UML diagrams, you start to get bogged down in the nitty gritty details of how everything needs to work. 
like you might need to figure out how to even do the double arrows for the enumeration. You might spend all of your time sitting here going, does this need to be a public admin or a private admin or protected admin or default admin? Like, what does this need to be? And to me, this ends up being more of a like code structuring meeting as opposed to like a conceptual meeting. And it stops being so much about talking about code and just figuring out that the, I don't know, the details of the entire, uh, like the object itself, I don't know, like an object level definition of what we're talking about. And although this may be helpful in some instances, I usually find that this is just like the, the end product of a, uh, of a documentation engine where everything needs to be documented, which is sort of my beef with SysML where, uh, SysML tends to have like, um, like business logic attached to it. And it feels almost like you're, you're writing UML that is then handed over to a business side of the company. And that's where this starts to become too cumbersome for me as a developer uh, to take value out of this. I obviously see the value out of this if I'm like running a team of developers because I don't have to do this, uh, but I'm not gonna tell them, hey, can you go draw up a SysML diagram for standup today so that we can talk about how the uh, function name printer function needs to be working. I'm probably just gonna say, hey, we need like a thing that prints out the name of a function. Can you do that? But okay, that's enough about uh, UML and SysML. I wanna talk about asking for help because I feel like this is probably the more important part of the video. Uh, basically, I get a lot of questions on the YouTube channel from people that are like, hey, can you help me with this? It's not working. And uh, th they might run into an error like this where there is like a uh, JavaScript runtime error in, in Rails and they'll go, this doesn't work. Why, please fix this, Mr. YouTuber. And then they'll just paste in the, the error and expect me to be able to, to fix it from there. And that of course is, isn't gonna help. So if you're in a situation where you're trying to ask for help, uh, include more information, not less. And in this case, you have more information, that's fine. But what you can do is you can actually, uh, I'll just edit the message. If you're in like Discord or Reddit, or I think even GitHub, uh, you do have markdown options. And this also works in Mattermost and maybe even Slack. Or if you do three of the back ticks, these are the tilde back ticks below the escape key, you can format your code in a way where it's in a nice little code block. And this is nice because sometimes it'll give you like horizontal scrolling. You can also, if you edit this, you can format your code in a way where it has HTML formatting by just adding HTML after the back ticks. That seems nice, but it gets even nicer if you're looking at like the device registrations controller and I'll go ahead and I'll open up the raw file here and I'll just copy this whole thing. If I come in here and I do the back ticks and then I type RB for Ruby and then I paste this in. Oh, I guess this won't work because it's gonna convert it into a file, that's fine. I'm gonna send this, it's gonna give me a collapsible file. So this is already useful, but I can actually give the syntax highlighting by clicking change language down here and searching for Ruby. And now I have a completely uh, syntax highlighted file here almost that I can scroll through in Discord. So I might say, hey, where do I uh, update the user account creation function? And then uh, I, you know, they send me this file, they ask that question, I can come in here and can say, okay, well, this is the device registrations controller. This is the create action. Obviously you wanna do it in here somewhere. And this is a very basic thing, but for some reason it's, I don't know if it's just not taught or if it's not stressed enough. I'm a lot more willing to help if I receive a neatly formatted block of code. And I can give you countless examples of people not doing this basic step. It might sound boomer of me or something, but this is like the bare minimum that I've always held myself to is just making sure that my code is readable when I send it to someone. Um, so if you do, end up like posting your code somewhere, whether it's here, whether it's on Stack Overflow or Reddit or something, just check if there's a way to do syntax highlighting, like uh, Discord code syntax highlighting. And then just see if there's like a guide or something here. There's a guide to Markdown on Discord. And I'm sure there's a code section here too, right here with multi-line code. And then it also includes syntax highlighting where it talks about exactly what I'm talking about here. I didn't know this was here. I just Googled it and this is apparently the first result. This is definitely like a, I don't know. It seems like such a silly thing to say, hey, can you like, 
I don't know, diagram out your code if you're talking to me about it so that I can see what you're talking about? Or can you do some syntax highlighting? Um, but some of the best questions I've ever had that elicited the most thought were someone just like snipping a, a section of their diagram. I did this with Windows key shift and S by the way, pasting it in Discord and going, uh, I don't know how to implement this. And then they include a snippet of code and the code might not be totally correct, uh, but they're trying to get to whatever the diagram is. And I can help them with that. These are usually fantastic. Whenever I get an email like this, I end up replying to it because it's a joy to reply to because it feels like someone is, is respecting my time. Uh, but I've also had people just send me, you know, like, hey, this doesn't work. Why fix it, Mr. YouTubers? And with these, it's so difficult to even start to, uh, you know, help because a lot of the time I don't have the context. By including everything like this, I get a lot more of the context and it helps me figure out why you're running into like a runtime error or whatever. But yeah, I just wanted to talk about this because I feel like modeling and, and asking for help are things that really aren't that glamorous to talk about. I'm sure this video will get like a hundred views uh, in total. They are important topics that I feel like, you know, just a little bit of, uh, of exposure can go a long way. So hopefully this is me uh, exposing you to something you hadn't really considered before. But yeah, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.